Have you ever had three different apps tell you three different ovulation days while you're in real pain and starting to wonder if something's actually wrong? If you're trying to conceive or just trying to understand your cycle, that's incredibly stressful. In this video, we're going to strip it back to evidence, not apps. By the end, you'll know how ovulation really works, safe, science-based ways to track it, what counts as normal period and ovulation pain, what might signal conditions like endometriosis, adenomyosis, fibroids, or pelvic inflammatory disease, and when you can self-manage versus when you should see your GP or seek urgent help. Welcome to Balanced Woman UK, where we provide evidence-based women's health information you can trust. Everything in this video is based on official NHS, Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynaecologists, and NICE guidance. And I've linked all sources in the description below. Ovulation is the part of your menstrual cycle when one of your ovaries releases an egg. That egg is available for fertilization for about 12 to 24 hours. Sperm, however, can survive inside your reproductive tract for up to around 5 to 7 days. NHS guidance explains that ovulation usually happens roughly 10 to 16 days before your next period starts, not necessarily in the dead center of the cycle. That means your fertile window is typically the five days before ovulation, plus the day of ovulation itself, and sometimes the following day. Because sperm live for several days, having sex regularly through your cycle, every two to three days, is often enough to give you a very good chance of conceiving without needing to identify an exact day. This is why NHS advice is very straightforward compared with what apps sometimes tell you, regular sex every two to three days if you are trying to get pregnant rather than chasing a single predicted fertility peak. Apps that simply count days and assume a perfect 28-day cycle are making an educated guess. They cannot tell whether you have ovulated early, late, or not at all, and they definitely cannot diagnose underlying problems like endometriosis or pelvic inflammatory disease. Many people are told to just trust the app when it comes to ovulation, contraception, or fertility planning. The problem is that most basic apps use calendar calculations only. They assume that your cycle length is stable and that ovulation happens at the same relative time every month. In reality, cycles can shift because of stress, illness, changes in weight, travel, approaching perimenopause, and a range of medical conditions. Even if you normally have a regular cycle, any of these can delay or bring forward ovulation. Relying solely on an app can therefore mislabel your fertile window, either shrinking it so much that you miss opportunities to conceive, or reassuring you that you are safe on days when ovulation actually occurs. NHS and NICE guidance on natural family planning emphasize using several signs together, such as cervical mucus changes, cycle pattern, and basal body temperature, usually taught by a trained practitioner rather than just a predicted date. Apps can be very useful as diaries to record your data, but they are not a replacement for evidence-based methods or medical assessment when something feels wrong. A good starting point is to keep a simple record of your cycle. Note the first day of each period as day one and count up to the day before your next period begins to work out your cycle length. Over a few months, you'll see whether your cycle is usually, for example, 26 days or 34 days or whether it varies. Remember that ovulation tends to happen about 10 to 16 days before the next period, regardless of overall cycle length. Rather than narrowing down to one exact day, it's often more realistic to work with a fertile week. The next practical tool is your cervical mucus. Throughout the month, your discharge usually changes. After your period, it may be dry or sticky. As estrogen rises approaching ovulation, mucus often becomes creamier, then wetter. 
At peak fertility, it usually becomes clear, slippery and stretchy, similar to raw egg white. That type of mucus helps sperm travel through the cervix and is a strong sign that you are in your fertile window. Learning what is normal for you over a few cycles is more useful than comparing yourself with any generic chart. Ovulation predictor kits, or OPKs, are another evidence-based option. These are urine tests from pharmacies or online that detect a rise in luteinizing hormone, which usually surges 24 to 36 hours before ovulation. A positive OPK result tells you that ovulation is likely soon and that this is a good time for sex if you are trying to conceive. They are particularly useful if you have irregular cycles and find calendar methods hard to interpret. They are not perfect and they don't replace seeing a doctor if you do not get periods, but they are far more specific than a basic app. Finally, basal body temperature tracking can give you extra insight. If you take your temperature first thing every morning before getting out of bed, you may see that it rises by about 0.2 degrees after ovulation because progesterone increases. This confirms that you have ovulated, but because the temperature shift happens after ovulation, it's less useful for pinpointing fertile days in the current cycle. Many people use BBT mainly to understand their pattern over time, not as a standalone method. In real life, inconsistent waking times, illness and alcohol can all blur the picture. For most people, combining a period diary, mucus observations and possibly OPKs alongside regular sex is a balanced, evidence-based way to track ovulation. A lot of people worry that every twinge in the pelvis means something serious. So let's talk about what is usually considered normal. Primary dysmenorrhea, typical period pain, is very common. It usually involves cramping in the lower tummy, back or thighs that starts shortly before or with the onset of bleeding, peaks over the first day or two and then settles within about three days. It is linked to chemicals called prostaglandins, which make the womb muscle tighten. For many, this pain improves with over-the-counter pain relief, heat, gentle movement and rest. If your pain behaves like this, responds to simple measures and doesn't regularly stop you functioning, it is more likely to be within the expected spectrum. Ovulation pain, often called Mittelschmerz, is another experience some people have. This is usually a one-sided pain or twinge in the lower abdomen around the middle of the cycle, sometimes felt as a brief, sharp stab or a short-lived, dull ache. It may last for a few hours, occasionally a day or two, and then disappear. If mid-cycle pain is mild to moderate, settles on its own or with a standard painkiller, and isn't accompanied by fever, heavy bleeding, or feeling generally unwell, it can be normal. But strong or persistent mid-cycle pain that makes you double over or is very different from your usual pattern should not be dismissed as just ovulation without proper assessment. While mild, short-lived ovulation and period pain can be normal, strong, worsening or persistent pain can sometimes be a sign of an underlying condition that needs medical assessment. NHS guidance highlights several important causes of pelvic or period-related pain, including endometriosis, adenomyosis, fibroids, pelvic inflammatory disease, complications related to an intrauterine device such as IUD or coil, emergency conditions such as ectopic pregnancy, twisted ovary, or ruptured ovarian cyst. If your pain is severe, changing from your usual pattern affecting your daily life, or if you're worried about any of these conditions, you should speak to your GP or seek urgent care, depending on how unwell you feel. Ovulation is a natural part of your cycle, but it doesn't run like a perfect calendar, and it doesn't always happen on day 14. Your most fertile time is the few days before ovulation and the day itself, and for most people you don't need to pinpoint the exact hour to conceive. Rather than relying on an app to tell you if you're fertile or infertile, 
A safer, NHS-aligned approach is to combine simple cycle records, cervical mucus changes, sometimes OPKs, and basal body temperature, plus regular sex every two to three days if you're trying to conceive. At the same time, pay attention to your overall pattern of pain and bleeding. If something feels wrong, especially if pain is severe or persistent, your periods change significantly or you're struggling to conceive. That's a reason to seek proper medical advice, not to just wait for an app to reassure you. Tracking ovulation safely is not about chasing a single predicted date. It's about using evidence-based methods, looking at your whole cycle and getting the right support when your body is asking for it. If you want to build on this, your next step is to learn the basics of fertility according to NHS guidance, so you feel confident and informed about your reproductive health and your options.